Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and it's time to summon the elect accounts. Yep, in patch 5.0, Carl Franz has gotten a nice little bit of a rework here. Something to keep him in line with how the Empire has been in the past few years, but expand upon that because he is the Emperor and the Emperor needs to be a bit more unique, right? So just like Balthazar Gelt, he's getting a few twists and turns. So let's talk about the faction effects. Has access to the elect accounts, enabling access to powerful state troop units and auxiliaries. Immune to diplomatic penalties from trespassing in Empire regions. That means that if you want to walk inside to Midland, for example, and get rid of Kazrak, you're not going to suffer issues with Boris. Let's continue. Allegiance points gained plus 25%. Campaign movement range plus 10% for all armies. Going to be very useful for you when you're in the Empire dealing with, well, all the problems there. And finally, growth plus 5 per allied faction. Since you'll be allying up very early on with the Bretonians and the Kizavites, this is going to be very good for you. Now, Lord effects are as follows. Can replenish in neutral territory, Lord's army. Upkeep minus 20% for elect account state troop units in Lord's Army. And finally, additional plus 5% weapon strength and missile damage per experience rank for all elect account state troops in Lord's Army. Pretty good bonuses overall. Let's jump into the game. Alright, Franz's campaign is the same as always, you're going to start in Altdorf, and you're still going to be dealing with the Secessionists, but to make it a little bit better for the Empire players, you're going to start off with Helmgard. No need to siege that and fight that within the first five turns or so. Now let's just take over the settlements, which just three minor ones, nothing too big there, and then start progressing as normal. This is going to make it much better for you too, as you're also going to be getting some natural growth in that fort, so you're going to be able to upgrade that early and prepare yourself because, you know, you've got the issues with uh, Grom the Paunch and obviously the Wood Elves sometimes turn on you. So, yeah, defenses, always great. It basically shaves off a turn or two of your starting campaign so you can get into the big stuff. Now, the Elect Accounts system is pretty much the same. So, yeah, this is not a lot of stuff to talk about. Only difference is obviously Gelt isn't there anymore. You do have Elsef as she is right next to you. And there's a new Vampire Lord in Solon. So you are still dealing with a few Vampires here and there. They're going to be kind of annoying, but not too much of a problem. Now, there's been a few changes to Karl Franz's unique skill line. Functionally, it remains the same. You're still getting some big bonuses towards, say, for example, uh, Lord Recruit Rank, extra experience game for your army and so on. But yeah, it's centralized a little bit. There's a lot of bonuses towards Greatswords and Reichsguard, which kind of follows around the lore and the memes and so on. You still boost up your Elector Count troops very heavily, so if you wanted to, you could turn this into a full army. I mean, it would be kind of mismatched, but why not? And massive upkeep reductions to Empire Knights, Knights of the Blazing Sun, Reichsguard, and the new Knights of the Black Rose. So if you want to go for heavy cavalry, you can do so with Franz. It feels really, really well. I personally prefer a few great swords, some guns, and obviously some artillery pieces to go for like the whole united front, but it very much depends on the player. Again, not big changes, but big enough to be noticeable and big enough to kind of change a uh, playstyle a little bit. Imperial authority has finally been fixed. I know that sounds weird to think, but yes. So, now how it works is still you're getting bonuses and negatives, which is completely understandable, and some of them can be pretty rough. However, the authority system is now focused on numbers, as in 1 to 100, rather than the old system where you wait a few turns and, yeah, you're already going into the red because everyone is dying, right? The bonuses definitely feel a little bit better, and it's clear that now it's just going to hold a bit better. The original mechanic wasn't bad by any means of the words, I think that it laid the best framework that it could, but this is the quality of life improvement that actually brings it more in line with Warhammer 3, and it's very obvious when you start looking towards other clips. For example, at some point here, you know, the Empire had lost Hochland to Festus, Stirland was invaded by Vlad, and obviously Ostermark just being destroyed by Draka, and our good friend the Greenskin, who should really be somewhere else, but you know. The authority still stayed in the middle. By this point, the Empire had lost Middenheim too, and Middenland in general. The Beastmen had destroyed them, so I reclaimed it for them. It just feels like you're not really having to race against time now. It's still a mechanic that you have to worry about, yes, but it's more of an addition towards your faction and it's a core mechanic rather than a chore. Speaking of which, we have to talk about other stuff which is kind of linked to this. So prestige is still in the game, I know some people might be sighing now, but it's a bit better. You still gain it and lose it in the same way, but Carl Franz has something just to actually make use of prestige. So. 
Electoral machinations, the emperor's decrees. While you still have access to the usual stuff, which is the whole uh, building and taking away from reputation between factions, here you're playing as the emperor, right? So you can call people to arms, which is reducing recruitment cost and increasing recruitment capacity, or you can have an army spawn in another imperial territory to be able to use that as a defense to also build up fealty with the other factions because you're sending your support there, you could decide, maybe I want to use a Cassius Belli, and that means that I can declare war on another Imperial faction that I just don't want to waste time confederating, but I don't want to start a civil war and eventually get all the other Empire factions turning against me. Or you can just, you know, force confederation with this. This is the great thing. It finally gives you a reason to use your prestige. Now, yes, you'll still have the usual dilemmas that pop up every few turns or so that will require prestige or allow you to gain some, but usually by around turn 50 onwards, if you've been racking enough, you know, doing enough battles and so on, you're never really going to go into the red. Now you've got a reason to spend it, it's going to be better, rather than having like 100,000 prestige at the end of a campaign, thinking, wow, that was a waste of a mechanic. Hell, pretty early on, you can pretty much start confederating other factions with just the prestige stuff, and it just feels a lot better too. And if you're risking fealty going down, well, you know, just use some more prestige to bring it back up with other factions. There is no downsides to this, as far as I've seen. It just feels a lot better, it feels a lot more fluid, and I've said this before in other videos uh, with other mechanics being reworked and reintroduced. This is how it should have been originally. It's glad to see it now. Better late than never. I'm not angry, I'm actually just fairly happy. By the end of this day, there will have been, what, five videos that have come out all focusing around reworks in one way, shape, or form, and you would have seen that a lot of stuff is coming in patch 5.0. I'm not reviewing anything, I'm just showcasing that this patch is bigger, so it does look like CA has maybe woken up a little bit and gone, oh, we need to make sure that this is actually good before Sega decides to kill us off, which, I mean, was a genuine feel for a lot of people, that's for sure. Further to this, we actually have a really interesting change for the Imperial Authority mechanic that doesn't affect Alsef or Kalfrans, but rather the Hans Marshal, Volkmar the Grim too, and Balthus Argelt, who is now in Grand Café. If you decide to go back to the Empire, well, yeah, you get Imperial Authority. This means that you get another added mechanic if you decide to move around. With this, I have actually been using a mod, which is the Change Starting Settlements mod, just to showcase it, but it's fairly fluid. Yeah, just land inside the Empire, take control of a settlement, Obviously, don't do it against a faction which you're really wanting to be an ally with, but rather some Norskin or vampire or whatever. But yeah, you're back and you've got the authority stuff. It's an added mechanic to factions that already have their own. This, as far as I'm aware, is kind of new tech. And I'd like to see it being explored more because adding extra mechanics like this, just having them pop up, essentially makes my head kind of think this could work for a lot of potential future characters. Hell, it could even work for current characters who might have had their mechanics kind of changed around a lot, but still some stuff could come back for them. It's a really good system. I know this was in the faction effects, but I want to talk about it because you have no idea how great of a quality of life thing this is. With Carl Franz moving around the Empire and not having all these trespassing issues is so good. The best case in point is everything with Midland. Because, yeah, they get attacked by Kazrak, they get attacked by these orcs. Festus comes in. You have to save Boris Todbringer's ass so often. Being able to walk through his territory without having to get, like, an agreement early on is fantastic. Don't get me wrong, I don't like playing Babysitter, but when you're playing Carl Franz the Emperor, you're gonna have to protect the Empire. This is a clearly good change, I'm quite happy about this. It doesn't have to be brought into every faction, let's be honest, but it makes a lot of sense for the faction leader. There's been a general update to the technology tree, not as big as other factions, but yeah, a little update here and there to make them a little bit better, which is always lovely. A section has been added for the Colleges of Magic, which is going to be really good for you if you like spellcasters, and well, I mean, you're playing as the Empire, you've got a little bit of everything, of course you're going to be using spellcasters. Overall, I think that this is a pretty good change. It's not like they needed a bit more. The Empire technology tree was always meant to be very, very small compared to the others, mostly because this is the vanilla faction that people are going to jump into and then get expanded upon. So, yeah, I think overall I'm quite happy with this. Now, we can say that there is a new FLC hero here, and that is the Gold Wizard, recruitable by pretty much all Empire factions, well, all the Empire factions. And yeah, it's a hero with the Law of Metal, so now you finally have access to all of 
of them. Sadly, no uh, wizard lords yet, but hey, we're getting engineers and so on, so we'll talk about them a little bit later. The one thing that needs to be noticed, though, and I'm not going to be showing every hero, but I will be showing well, the ones that actually did change, actually, is that the Empire heroes are finally getting some extra skills. Yeah, this means that your gold wizard, your brand new one, has some unique skill lines, meaning that he can actually use all his skill points. Same thing with the Empire Captain and all your other spellcasters, too. They're generally just going to be some effects here and there, like, you know, reducing winds of magic cost and so on, which, again, super cool. You're going to be using a lot of spellcasters when it comes to playing as the Empire. So yeah, it just makes your heroes, who are already powerful as they are, even better. And, yeah, if you go to the end of the skill line, as you've been able to see on screen, you can get some army-wide bonuses. So, for example, with a Celestial Wizard, you can get Campaign Movement range plus 5% for Hero's Army, and Ambush Success Chance plus 20% for Hero's Army. Pretty damn good, right? I'm not going to go through all of them, but yeah, there's some good examples. You know, Fire Resistance plus 15% for Hero's Army if you use a Bright Wizard. Very useful if you're going to be dealing with uh, the Chaos Dwarfs and stuff like that. The Amber Wizards just have a Summon instead. It does depend. Some of them are better than others, and that's always going to be the case. Like, not gonna lie, I think the Grey Wizard one isn't too good, because it's just ambush success chance, and usually with the Empire you're just going guns blazing, because Empire. But, yeah, I mean, it's a nice system, it's very fluffy, it adds to a lot of extra player power, also NPC stuff too, so keep in mind, this should, in theory, keep the Empire alive a little bit longer if they're recruiting wizards or other hero characters. I think a bunch of other races have been getting updates like this too, and we're going to be talking about that as we progress, because there's clearly going to be a lot of videos coming out during this embargo period. But yeah, the Empire does feel a lot better. You're going to notice this when you're playing with the Hans Marshall or Volkmar. Not everyone actually plays with Carl Franz. The grand majority of you guys do, but it's nice to have this option to affect everyone. Especially if you haven't seen it by now, or if the video is not out by now, uh, but it will be out today. There is a big rework coming in for Balthazar Gelt, which makes the these wizards even more terrifying. I do believe people have been asking for this quality of life update since pretty much the beginning of Warhammer 3, which was, oh god, two years ago. Oh, always weird when you think about it that way, right? It sucks that these circumstances that have led to this have finally got on us what we wanted, but it's better late than never, and these things will be very much cherished by the community, at least I believe so, because again, it makes these characters a lot more useful, it makes them so much better in terms of everything. By early to mid campaign you'll already have a few spellcasters up and running and they will be a bit of a backbone to your army, especially well Carl Franz gets a random one, which by the way I'll mention it now, there's currently a bug where your random spellcaster that you get at the start of your campaign spawns a Helmguard. It's a bit weird. I mean, it still works out, it doesn't really change anything. I've reported it and hopefully it gets fixed before it goes live, but uh, yeah, better for you guys to know now than anything else, right? It's also important to note that there's not a lot of general faction reworks when it comes to the Empire, because, well, the Emperor is fine. Let's be honest, the rework from Warhammer 2 is perfectly fine, and it did fix up a lot of issues that the Empire had. What really needed to be fixed was the Imperial Authority, and a nice new lick of paint for Karl Franz and Balthazar Gelt, which we already have. And now I think it's time to talk about my thoughts regarding Karl Franz. Is he fun? Is he not? The update definitely did a lot better for him. You see, Franz was always fun, and the big issue was dealing with everyone else that was attacking and dogpiling onto the Empire, which made your campaign harder. As a faction, the Empire is fine, and has been fine since, well, they got their rework in Warhammer 2. The quality of life updates, especially the change to authority, is going to make the Empire a lot more fun, where I imagine a lot of people are going to be spending time with Carl Franz. Adding new mechanics, like the whole decrees and so on, is just a bonus, and the bonus Bonus is very much appreciated. Now, obviously, I've not been able to talk about all the new units. That's going to come down later. Unfortunately, it's just a different embargo. But you don't really need the new units like the Landship, the Ironsides, and so on. If you're looking at this, do I need Thrones of Decay to make the Empire more bearable as a campaign now, even if it's not to play Elsef, but rather just to play Franz again. And this is the thing, DLC should never be, I need to have this to make the thing more fun, which is a shame because it's happened in certain cases, like for example Champions of Chaos and so on, but that's how it is, right? I feel like Carl Franz now is a really enjoyable state. Don't get me wrong, I liked playing as Franz, even with the current issues that are still in the live game today, but it does become a slog, and a lot of you guys are veterans with this game, right? You've been playing for a long time, and so have I. We won't have this issue, 
But when a new person comes in and sees the Empire, loads of people recommend the Empire as the best starting faction, but then gets swarmed left, right and centre by pretty much every single possible enemy, it turns them off from the game. I feel like now with the update to 5.0, you could probably see the Empire as a recommended faction start once again uh, on the same line as Cafe. So yeah, that's good. That's good. Now, it's clear that this isn't going to be the only Empire update that we're going to get. We're likely going to get a few minor ones in the future because, yes, it's very obvious that there's still some DLC missing. Grandmasters, Wizard Lords 2, and, well, you know, the Cult of Ulrich. So I imagine that we might see some more quality of life updates for the Empire. This one has been a bit smaller than, say, for example, the Dwarfs or Nurgle, but I feel like the Empire needed less when compared to those. It is looking optimistic, though, so yeah. Let me know what you guys think about Carl Franz's changes and those generic changes that are going to be affecting all the Empire factions in the comments below. There's a lot of videos coming out today, by the way, so every hour there'll be a new one. I think five videos today. And we should have steady content coming out for the next couple of days and, well, the next couple of weeks, actually. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, pop by to the stream if you want to at twitch.tv slash thegreatbookofgrudges. And I'll see you all again really, really soon. Have a good day.